Hi guys, Barnaby for Spurred On, and this is your regular Monday edition of Five Things We Learn. And of course, this week it is from the Stoke City Zero, Tottenham Hotspur four match at the Bet 365 Stadium on Saturday. First up, an apology. We weren't able to get over to Stoke for the match. Unfortunately, I'm about to go in for an ankle operation, so we weren't able to get there. But for all those who are wondering where the fan cams were, don't worry, we are going to be at Wembley on Wednesday night for Spurs versus Monaco. Our return to the Champions League, 80,000 plus Spurs fans against Monaco. It's going to be an amazing night and the confidence will be high, of course, because for the second time in four months, we went to Stoke and did them 4-0. Name me some other teams who go there and beat them 4-0 because I don't think many t teams do. I know they've had a bad start, but another terrific performance. So let's talk about things that I felt we learned. Firstly, weirdly, results this season, the first four matches for Spurs, have been exactly the same as they were in the corresponding fixtures last season. The only difference being Liverpool won all this season, whereas last season it was nil-nil. Now, that's just like a, a quirk of fate, I suppose. But in terms of the positive side of that, this time last season, after four games at the beginning of the Premier League, we had three points. That's right, three points. We lost away at Man United. We drew with Stoke at home, two all. We drew with Leicester away, one all. And we drew with Everton at home, nil-nil. Now, we have eight points from our first four games. That is five more than this stage last season. So let's face it, there's been a bit of negativity before the Stoke game. You know, can Dyer and Wanyama play together when Dembele's away? Have we really not started Christian Eriksen's form, for instance? But let's look at it positively. It's been an excellent start. We're there in fourth place at the moment. Obviously, Everton play tonight. They have a good start as well. They play Sunderland. They can go above us. But it has been a good start, especially considering Moussa Dembele is out. And let's not forget our stats last season with Moussa Dembele starting was so much better than when he went. So I expect him on Wednesday night to go straight into the side alongside Eric Dyer, and he will be chomping at the bit, I think. So in terms of our start, much better. In terms of the corresponding fixtures, exactly the same. We go into Sunderland at home Sunday afternoon. Let's get a win there, go up to 11 points. Let's just keep the ball rolling. Let's not forget that apart from the Man United game away, first game of last season, we then won on a 15-match unbeaten run. If we can put together something like that at the beginning of this season, it'll be fantastic. We will have a chance again of being there or thereabouts. Let's be honest, Manchester City look unbelievably strong. For anyone who watched the first half of their Manchester derby, they look almost unplayable. But Manchester United were naive in that first half. Mourinho then changed it, started playing a lot more direct second half, and they could have nicked something. Chelsea yesterday only got a draw at Stoke. So these teams who have got new managers, they've improved their squads, they will still pick up draws and losses. We can still be there or thereabouts because we, in my opinion, have got the best team ethic, the best squad in terms of t uh, players who are bonded and know each other, have been playing together for a year. Uh, even Ben Davis coming in for Danny Rose didn't make a difference, did it? Danny Rose has been fantastic for us for the last year, 18 months. Uh, especially at the start of this season and at the Euros, but Ben Davis just slotted in and played absolutely magnificently. So the first thing that I feel we learn, let's be positive about this start. Let's be positive about how we're playing, not just because we won 4-0, but how we've got eight points now and we only had three points at this stage last year. Second thing I want to talk about, alluded to it before, people had been saying Christian Eriksen's form beginning of this season, not good. And I agree, his first touch had been off. He looked a little bit like he wasn't quite there last week signed his new four-year deal, and I think that's a weight off his mind. He was unbelievable against Stoke at the weekend. As Matt Letizia said on Soccer Saturday, he was his man of the match for the two goals. The first one, he got down the line, I think, just a week ago, because he hadn't been playing well and the contract talks hadn't been done, he would have tried to whip that cross in and he may well have hit the goalkeeper or the first man. He was brave enough to shape to cross when Joe Allen came towards him, take it round him, and then just first time hit it to Sonny and Sonny's brilliant first touch finish, no chance Shea given. I just think the difference there is that his mind is now free, his contract's been done, he's earning the money he wants and thinks he should be earning and of course he should because he's been unbelievable for us for the last few years and he is now ready to play for Spurs and get his top form back starting on Saturday against Stoke, next match Monaco, then Sunderland. I think Eriksen may well even start scoring goals. Don't be surprised if the set pieces start flying in as well because he is an unbelievable free kick taker. It's very exciting to have him tied up 
and lead us into the new stadium as well in a couple of years time. Christian Eriksen to me, I'd be interested to see what you think in the comments but below, but to me, he is our most talented, natural, gifted playmaker and uh, it's, it's brilliant to have him tied down. So that was the second thing I wanted to talk about, his improvement after his slow start this season. Third up, I want to talk about Hung Min Son, not just because he scored two great goals, fantastic first time finishes, I talked about the first one. Second one, set up by Ericsson, who so brilliantly nicked the ball ahead of this midfielder, laid it into Sonny's path, just bent it into the top of the net over Shea Given. Unbelievable confidence to have those first time, those touches uh, and score with those first touches. However, I think it's all down to Maurizio Pochettino and his man management, because last week Sonny was on international duty with South Korea, Poch gave him a call and said, look, Eric Lamella is playing late Wednesday night in Venezuela for Argentina. He won't be back till Friday at the earliest and he'll be tired. Sonny, if you come back early, get on the training ground, you'll be in my team against Stoke and this will be your chance to stake a claim. And boy, did he stake it. You've got to say, he gives us a bit more pace. He gives us another option. He's a terrific finisher. Now, I know that Lamella is in fantastic form and has played well for us. I just think it's going to be a tough decision for Pochettino to make against Monaco. I really do. Because the way you look at it, you know, if he drops Sonny for Lamella now, what, what more can Hung Min Son do? You know, he had a fantastic performance. I think in terms of loyalty and keeping players motivated, he's now got to say to Eric Lamella, look, Son's going to have a little run in the team. He scored two goals. You've got to play your way back into it. What do you guys think? Do you think Son or Lamella should play against Monaco? Because you've got to say that Ali and Eriksson are shoe-ins for that, both of whom played again well, uh, played well against Stoke as well. Who would you pick? Be very interested to see. But for me, the third point, all about Pochettino's man management. Top stuff, and that's what makes him a better manager than anyone else in the league, in my opinion. Fourth point, have to talk about Harry Kane. His 50th league goal, the first time he has ever scored in the Premier League, or potentially any league before the 26th of September in a season. He even tweeted it himself. He said, feels weird to have scored this early. Everyone's been banging on about how tired he looks, how he's not doing. He's got his goal now. People will be off his back, and I fully expect him to go on against maybe Monaco, but definitely against Sunderland at the weekend and start his scoring run. And if he starts a run this early, the last two seasons he's been up there as either a uh, top goal scorer or there or thereabouts, I think he will be a potentially 30 Premier League goal a season man. Just like Alan Shearer was back in the day, I see them as very similar players. And I think if he really does start scoring, he could easily get 30 Premier League goals this season. Obviously he needs to stay fit, but also knowing that Janssen could come in behind him for the games where we are playing against tight defences or 11 men behind the ball. Or if he needs a little bit of a rest, I think that will help Harry Kane. And put it this way, I think if he doesn't score 30 goals this season, you can call it on me at the end of the season and say, Barnaby, you were wrong, but I think he will. That's what I'm saying, and well done, Harry, for getting off the mark before 26th of September. Good man. Last thing I want to talk about that we've learned, or just looking forward, really, confidence is high. Unbeaten at the beginning of the season, a really good pre-season, going to this very tough Monaco match at Wembley, 80,000-plus Spurs fans all watching. Let's not take this easily just because we beat Monaco home 4-0 or something in the Europa League last year and got a good draw away. They are currently sitting top of the French first division. They've uh, won three games and drawn one, 10 points. They beat Paris Saint-Germain, so they are gonna be a tough team to be reckoned with. But I think if the fans are really behind them, uh, behind Spurs on Wednesday, if we get a good start, really play the wide pitch, really know our game, I think we can turn them over and get a great start to our Champions League. However, let's not forget, Monaco will love the fact that they're playing at Wembley. It will make them really motivated to play well. They've already had a good start. It will be a tough match. Let's not moan and groan if passes go astray early or whatever. Let's just get right behind them and really back the boys to get a win that would set us up perfectly to win this Champions League group, which although it looks easier than it could have done, and it does, all four teams, I'd say, you know, improving sides. Not, there's not one who is so much better than the other. So pick up your points where you can, win your home games, get through to the next round, and then the more glamorous ties will come our way. Guys, let us know what you thought of the five things we learned from the Stoke match 
in the comment section below. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel on YouTube. Follow us on Twitter and Facebook at Spurred on TV. And most importantly, get behind the boys on Wednesday against Monaco. Come on, you Spurs. Hi, guys. Barno B for Spurred on and your regular Tuesday edition of Spurberts. Once again with Squawkers, Greg Slobart. Hey, Greg. I'm very good, thanks. Good. Obviously, uh, last... What 